Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bront Halfaton, Mist Runner. And as you can tell, we have just entered a dungeon. This dungeon is called Scholomance. Or Scholomance? Scholomance? I don't know how to pronounce it. But I'm going to discuss how to tank this place. One pull at a time. We're going to go all the way through. Thank you for the acid. That's a very questionable whisper to get in the game. All right. A couple things about Brunt. I'm Fury Brought. No points in arms. 32 points in Fury. Take a look at it if you want. And then we've got Defiance, Shield Block, Last Stand. Bunch of cool stuff there. Be talking through these pulls, these rotations. We've got nice damage meters here. I don't have very many add ons. This one is called Omni CC. You can see the debuffs on enemies and stuff like that. I have my target markers bound to the F keys, F1 through F8, skull X, triangle square, moon diamond, circle star. Makes it really easy to communicate with your DPS. One of the most annoying things for a tank is when the DPS is all over the place and you can't really prioritize your threat. The weakness of warrior tanks is your AOE threat generation is garbage until you get Thunder Fury. So you really want to be clear about what you're focusing your threat on so the DPS can really open up, get a lot of damage in, and not pull aggro too much. So you just tell them that, and then they can usually do a lot better. We have two rogues, a priest, and a warlock, so we don't have a sheep or anything that's really easy CC. A pull like this, you oftentimes have some caster units, so getting it around the corner means that everything gets stacked up really nice. If you're a torn, throwing War Stomp is a cool way to reduce incoming damage. These ghostly ones are pretty annoying. Oftentimes you want to focus down the squishiest and most annoying mobs first. This dungeon has a lot of casters with a lot of weird effects. Kind of awkward to tank from melee. And the rooms are pretty densely packed with enemy units, so you want to be pretty careful here. Generally speaking, my recommendation for doing pulls is to start out pretty conservative and take it at an easy pace where you're watching the healer's mana between every pull and try to get a sense for what pace they can keep up. You don't want to pull too fast and make the healer panic and freak out and stuff and people die and it's a mess and you wipe and you have to ghost run back. So stability is usually the first priority that I go for with these pulls. Waiting until the healer has at least half mana is pretty legit. It is worth assessing the power level of the players that you have. So our priest is level 59, so not 60 yet. I want to be mindful of that. I can't treat this healer like they're a A-team raid healer that we have that has a bunch of epics and things like that. My gear is quite good, which makes this fairly convenient to run. The threat generation is quite strong. There is a bit of a double edge. As your gear gets better, your avoidance can get really high, which causes it to be difficult for you to generate rage. Rage generation is a major part of being successful as a warrior for both tanking and DPS. I have seen some warriors not use something like uh, Blood Rage consistently. Blood Rage you should basically use every single time it's up. If you're looking at the progress over the instance, you really want to be hammering that out. Thinking about how much total rage did I get over the course of this instance? Hopefully as much as you can.
Thank you for the host, Dark. Alright. Gonna pull this one around the corner. A bunch of packs of four in these. I think there are summoners in these pulls. So we want to address that if possible. Yeah. We want to kill this summoner first. Make sure I have threat on all these if I can. Throw a war stomp. Demo shout is really nice for reducing incoming damage. If you were in a fight that had very few units and you're kind of rage starved, you might advise against Demo shout. It's not the end of the world, but you do have lots of decisions between do I want to spend rage on more threat? Do I want to spend rage on damage? Do I want to spend rage on mitigation? And one of the most important things to have in your toolkit as a tank, especially if you're Fury Prot, is a macro for sword and board versus your dual wield. So with just some hotkeys, it's Shift T for my shield, Shift X for my dual wield. So if a pull gets tough, we accidentally get more. Or if you're up against a boss that hits pretty hard, you can just swap that over really easily. I did look through the raid logs that we have posted for Molten Core. And our raid leader, who's a feral druid, he was looking through my threat per second, which is quite high. I haven't really had many threat problems unless... Uh, Usually physical DPS gets a whole bunch of crits at the start of a pull. But he was looking at the threat and the damage of my different abilities to get a sense of what is the most impactful for holding aggro of all the different warrior abilities. So revenge is a surprisingly high amount of threat. Revenge gets unlocked whenever you block, dodge, or parry, which happens pretty often if you're in tank gear, especially if you have a shield. It deals very low damage, but for any ability in classic, you get different kinds of things. And the abilities are more or less balanced. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's a pretty imbalanced game, but they try to balance it to an extent. So you have more raw damage abilities. You've got abilities that have strong threat You've got abilities that are kind of a hybrid of the two. Sunder Armor is basically your go-to, just spammable threat skill. Revenge is your budget rage reactive threat skill. Team is getting pretty low here. We did get the skull off. The rogues are taking out this caster. If there are caster units that rogues are fighting, especially or fury warriors, you going to try to get aggro on all of them doesn't really do that much for the team. And the reason for that in the case of casters is because they're dealing magic damage, not physical damage. So they're hitting everyone for the same amount, pretty much. I don't have any shadow res on this aside from this Helm of Wrath. I think, no, Legs of Might have a little bit. The Shoulders have a little bit. But it's not really that much. Resistance against level 60 is poor. So we wouldn't say that you would really heavily prioritize holding aggro on these. Ideally, you hold threat on as much as you can, and you try to have the pulls be as stable as you can. But a lot of being a strong tank involves being able to adapt to the situations that come up. One of the really interesting and tricky abilities that you have as Fury Prot is Death Wish. It ups your damage by a whole bunch, but also lowers your armor and resistances. So if you're low and the healer's low on mana, it can be a really bad call. But if it's the start of a pull, you have high avoidance, you feel like you're not going to take that much damage, it can allow you to hold threat a lot better and just clear the content faster. I'm passing on these Dark Runes. There is a little bit of a business side to being a tank that some people consider. Tanking is a role that kind of sucks at solo farming. So sometimes tanks will do stuff like reserve 
different kinds of drops. I don't usually do that. Sometimes I say it would be nice if you follow the stream, but doing something nice for somebody gives you a little bit of a sense of satisfaction as well. And in Classic, you have local servers and server identity where that and your reputation matters. So if you do nice things for people, oftentimes they remember, and that can work in your favor later on. Line of sight pulls are nice. Just turn on that auto attack. And then revenge and sunder away. Bloodthirst does a lot of threat, but it's very expensive for rage. It ends up being a huge chunk of your total damage output as well. We've got the tutor. Two other ones, priests at full mana. Blood rage. Getting those sunders. Looks like we got four. So I'm gonna mark this with square by pressing F4. Now these have a silence on them, so it's pretty annoying for the casters here. Fortunately, we do have three melee. So we have a lot of damage output still. There's a boss on this balcony here that you can summon with Blood of the Innocents. There's a succubus in the previous room who drops it. I'm not quite sure if this group needs that boss or not. If they do, we know how to do that. If not, then it's whatever. I don't really need anything from this instance. One, two, three. There are some cool add-ons you can consider that make it easier to see stuff, like whether or not they're attacking you. Personally, I'm very minimalist when it comes to add-ons. Like I just turn my nameplates on with control V and I turn them off again. I kind of like the immersion of just looking at the action of what's happening. But do whatever works for you. Rend is an interesting ability that you can mix in. It does up your DPS by a little bit as Fury Prot not specced into it. If you are prot with impale, like shield slam impale, which is the spec that I was from what, level 53 through our first few molten core clears. If you're that spec, then rend is pretty nice for its damage, but I have no extra points in it. And it's super low threat. And a lot of the times the enemy mob doesn't even live long enough for you to get full value from it. It's damage over time. If they don't live the whole time, then you don't get the full damage. So you can focus more on your instant attacks. Reminder to use Battle Shout consistently. Doesn't matter what spec you are as warrior, it's just a ton of attack power. New stuff comes in, get some initial threat, throw in some sunders, getting revenges. I'm not worrying about stuff like Demo Shout for situations like this. Check the healer mana, and we need a little bit of a break. We have one rogue who is doing the lion's share of the damage. Let's see. What is this setup he's got? DM East, blue, green. Wow. Mirror Song is good, Black Crow is really good, Hand of Justice is good. This is good. This is pretty, pretty Prebis. Prebis is pre-raid best in slot, as they say. One thing I try to remind people of is to remember that it's cool to play in the world of Azeroth. I was reflecting on 
Warcraft 3 to WoW. Like, when WoW was first announced after Warcraft 3, how awesome it was that you would get to be a character in the same world as Thrall and Illidan, Maya and Tyrande and Malfurion and all them. Now people get really focused on optimal specs, optimal gear, farming your consumables. Yeah, that's fun and that can be enjoyable and whatnot, but for some people it really removes a lot of the fun from the game. So thinking about the environments, like what is this place? What kind of heckin' books are on that bookshelf? How long have those candles been burning over there? These kind of questions. Brunt is considering those things. You know, what in the hell is this place? It's very spooky in here. The air is very stuffy. I'm used to being in Mulgore, where the grass is green and the plains are wide and open. Line of sight pull over and over again. If I wanted to squeeze a little bit more damage, I can sharpen my weapons. We don't have a shaman. If you're a horde, you want to make sure if there's a shaman in the group that you do not sharpen or weight your main hand because that prevents you from benefiting from wind fury. But in this case, we've got two rogues, a warlock, and a priest, so there's no wind fury to speak of. So let's do that. More threat, more damage. Faster clear. Let's get sharpening stone on Mira's song. My offhand. And then weight stone on fist weapon. I have no idea why the fist weapon with this claw requires a weight stone, but. We'll use whatever works. Remember to stock up on arrows before you go, or bullets if you are using a gun. Getting those three marks. Don't know if we can line a sight around this corner. I try. I kind of feel like that's not going to work. You can also just pull by running far enough away. These necromancers do a shadow bolt volley that hits fairly hard. When the group DPS is really high like this, sometimes you can just focus on the second kill rather than the first one. Very solid group so far. These casters are pretty annoying. If you kick them, they usually just switch schools. They can cast both shadow and frost magic. One, two, three. Did I just mark the small rat in the back? Silly. Shadow damage, curse, not too bad. Oh, that poor rat perished. The thunderclap was too much for it. Too much to bear. I have a shield bash macro we could mix in. Basically what it does is it just equips the shield and then casts shield bash. But it's tough to shield bash when the target is dead. Healer's at half mana. Shameless plug.
think I can line of sight pull around this corner. Yeah, sweet. Awesome. The priest hit 60. Well done. Arcane resistance cloak, that's going to come in handy in moon duels. If you're doing against a uh... Moonfire spam player, that's going to be the way to go. So we're going to be pulling through this room with a bunch of dragons. These ones, the handlers, deal a pretty strong knockback that hits you pretty far. There are some pits as well in this room. In these corners, they can knock you down into, which is pretty bad news. So this is a room to be careful in. These dragons also do a spit that's at range. So you want to line of sight pull. Keep things nice and smooth. The dragons are non-elite, so typically you'll focus threat on the handlers. The warlock is taking a lot of damage because Hellfire does damage to yourself. I'm trying to decide between warlock and warrior. Well, that's mainly a question of utility versus Team oriented power. The Warlock is a much better solo class. It's better for questing. It's less expensive to repair. You've got a pet to support you and keep you company. You've got lots of tools and tricks like soul stones, health stones. Summoning is one of the most powerful abilities in the game because Classic WoW is so difficult to navigate. It's really far going place to place this handler next. My main characters over the course of WoW have been Night Elf Warrior was my first character back in vanilla. I did end up getting 60 eventually though it was pretty slow going and I main tanked AQ-20, ZG, and then was one of the off tanks for AQ-40. Never stepped foot in Blackwing Lair, only barely just visited Molten Core, and I never set foot in Nax. In Burning Crusade, I mained an Undead Rogue, where I was focused primarily on PvP. Met a friend at university, and we did a bunch of arenas together and ended up pushing and getting gladiator which was really fun we did warlock rogue combo and then in wrath i rolled a torn warrior tanked on that in a raiding guild just level it up with the dungeon finder i like tanking a lot i kind of miss competing on the damage meters a little bit Fury Warrior is a very good DPS class. But with this character, we're leading a guild, and there's a lot of fun in just standing in the front. I really like the concept of leading from the front, not just in video games, but in general. I read a book, The Viking Art of War, this year, which was pretty interesting. I found out that I have a bunch of Scandinavian heritage. That's basically like 90% of it. And typically the Jarls and Kings and things like this would be political leaders, but they would also in fighting be standing in the front and shouting and taunting and being with the rest of them rather than the later more conventional style, which is the general is on a horse that's up on a hill kind of watching the battlefield. From a survivability standpoint, it's definitely the safer bet. 
but from an inspiration standpoint, it's not quite as good. It's feeling like your your leader is in the shit with you. Putting themselves at risk as well, not just using you as can fodder or whatever. That's why we have Brunt, half a ton Mistrunner. A torn war of the Mistrunner tribe. Thanking the boss for the team. So these are the little pits that you can fall down into. Be careful. Whenever you pull the group, there's an aggro bias on the person who initiated that pull. A little bit like a sticky aggro kind of a situation. People can still pull off of you, but there is advantage there. So for these pulls, if it's a handler and then some little whelps, I just focused fully on the handler there because it hits harder than the whelps. And the whelps are going to hit me for multiple volleys anyway. So it's much lower priority. Mix in a death wish here too. Probably don't need to kill this one, but we can. Should probably use my Seal of the Dawn. Rune of the Guard Captain versus Mark of the Chosen. Which one is worth swapping out? Let's just do this one. Hit rating is really nice for dual wielding. Fury Prot is way more dependent on hit rating than Deep Prot or Deep Prot Impale. Reason being you're more reliant on your white hits. It's harder to hit with your offhand than it is with your main hand. So that's one of those big money stats. So we've got two of them here. I think these do a cleave. So since I got the second one with a Sunder, I'm going to focus on the one that people are killing. And then now that it's about to die, I'm going to switch to the second one. Get a War Stomp. Can just pop Last Stand. These guys hit really hard. Probably recommend a shield if you're not really geared. If you are really geared, you probably don't need this guide. Interesting. We could even do cool stuff like bandage up this rogue. I wonder if... Are these constructs or undead? Because if they're undead... Yeah, they're undead. You can cannibalize. Look at this guy's face. Ah, I'm dead on the stairs. I was dead, but then I was undead, but now I'm dead again on the stairs. That's what he's thinking, probably. I think can we thread the needle here. I think we can. Battle Shout is a decent bit of threat. It's not super high, but it's something. Okay, we did get an add. These hit pretty hard, so let's go with the shield. Just make it easier on the healer. So we can throw in shield block. And because they're hitting pretty hard, I'll throw a demo shout. Use the health stone. Looks like they're focusing the boss, which is cool. Priest is kind of low, so we can just throw a shield wall. It's better to use your abilities than to just die with your cooldown still available. It's a resource, so should spend it. Not be overly conservative with it. Well, all the stats on that one. Is this a druid item? Bear druid item? Classic WoW itemization is pretty funny. In a way, it makes the good items that much more amazing because there are so many bad items. So we got that boss, 
Now there are two paths here. It's this one. Oh yeah, this room is pretty tricky. Okay. The silly guy is running super fast. This um, Risen Aberration was a track star back in its day. Super fast individual in the world. There's Scroll of Spirit. Here you go, priest. Hope you feel very spiritual. We could use fort buffs. It's not that important. These ghouls give a big cloud of stinkiness when they die. Just gonna make sure you don't want to stand in that. And these reanimated corpses, I believe, do pop up and they hit pretty hard. So if you can, I would also advise trying not to have those die right on the healers. Yep, those gonna have to gonna have to back up from that. Did we have a soul stone on the priest? That's the question here. Standing in the fire, it's tricky business. Is the soul stone up? It just went down. It's gonna be a no, I'm guessing. Now our only hope is goblin jumper cables. We can summon them, yeah, because there are three people. Save us a little bit of time. So yeah. This is a good opportunity to give the reminder of patience with the new team. This priest we actually had joined the guild just today, and they were kind of hesitant because they're like, well, I'm still learning the game. Everyone learned a game at some point. You just don't start out playing a video game with a bunch of depth with total knowledge. You learn stuff as you go along. So having some patience and some compassion can go a really long way. For this room, you can basically just pull all along the right side is how I tend to move through it. There are pulls on the left side. They're pretty awkward. The different unit types and their effects are quite strong. So I wouldn't really consider this a fantastic farming option. If the pulls are really easy, sometimes you would just take them out for money. Priest is here. Warlock summoned one. We get the other rogue. Yep. It's interesting that the nameplate goes away whenever they're stealthed. Has that always been the case? I can't see very well in the summon. We did see that ghoul patrolling. We can get the ghoul individually. That makes things a little bit easier. Let's just shoot him. We got a track star as well. And a reanimated. Those go really slow. Okay, let's see if the rogue learned. 
Don't stand in the gross stuff. It's a disease. Nature damage inflicted. Not that big of a deal. Fantastic. There's also a layer of preference, too, for how much you want to try to sneak past stuff versus clear the areas fully. We got aggro on all of these, get the war stomp, focusing on the disease ghoul primarily. Okay, now we need to back up. Don't want to stand in that. This is a rather common mechanic in the game. A unit dies and leaves something nasty behind. In Molten Core, there are some fire elementals. I guess the pulls right after Baron Geddon. There are some before and after that leave fire on the ground after they die. So this is a nice dungeon to get some practice of that mechanic. Get your silly mistakes out of the way. And show the so you don't make a silly goose out of yourself in Molten Core. If you're a warrior, you want to build some resistance sets. I think for druid tank this also applies. For MC, fire res is the way to go. For AQ later on, you need a bunch of nature resistance. I don't really have enough experience to know if you need shadow resistance for Nax or anything. That kind of sounds like it would make sense. There's a decent bit of shadow res on wrath and might gear. Let's get this cool. The radius on that isn't too bad. Let's see, how big is this? Looks like it's about the same as the visual. There are a lot of effects in games where the actual effective radius is different than the visual. That one seems about on par, which is nice. Priest is kind of low on mana. Hopefully they have water. I don't actually know. Oh boy. Priest is getting hit by something. Let's put the shield on. We can also do a last stand as well. And get back from the icky stuff. Battle shout, taunt. Risen aberrations hit really hard. Reanimated corpses. Don't get me started on the re reanimated corpses. Bandage people up. I have eight stacks of this. You know, can we get a cure disease? And we ask nicely for stuff because being polite is a strong move. You don't have to be polite. It's a pretty, th it's a pretty thick disease. We've got abolished disease once every five seconds. I'm very diseased right now.
Increases it less than half. I'll wait a second. These hit really hard. What's up, Nightman? How you doing? We're enjoying a nice Sholomance run. Someone asked for a tank, and I thought to myself, I haven't made a Sholomance tanking guide yet. Let's make a tanking guide. This is a good instance for it, I think. The poles here are pretty awkward. See the nasty green cloud on the floor? Oof. You could just have a huge nature resistance set and just absorb it. Or you could use it for damage so you get more rage. Looks like I'm not really getting rage from being in that. Can you get infected with the politeness disease? Sure. But only if you ask nicely. Give the priest a second. A fresh 60. I wonder if they remember to put in their talent point. That's something I'll forget sometimes. And then you've leveled up three times, then you go to your talent page to be like, I wonder what I can get next, and you see talent points available three. And it's like Christmas. Oh my goodness, three talent points? Pog champion. I like the animation of Crusader Enchant, has those two swords that pop up over your head. Don't stand in the gross. You staying up watching this? I'm in the Pacific time zone, so it's 1:22 a.m. right now, Seattle, Washington. The beautiful thing about online gaming is it is an international endeavor. People from all around the world. Playing games, watching streams, streaming games. Have someone in their house who's watching someone stream games. Opening up someone's stream to find out where they are to kill them in the game. <laughs> Got all kinds of stuff. I've only been camped from stream sniping one time. I guess it's kind of a perk of being primarily a, a raider and also in a guild. If you're in a guild, people can give you some backup if you're being hassled unnecessarily. It happened to me when I was in the classic beta. Because the invites were pretty slim, so we didn't have a guild or anything. And there was a person in the Twitch chat who has taken a bunch of issue with me. They were saying that they didn't believe that I was actually Gladiator in BC. And they thought I was bad and all this other kind of stuff. And I was like, what? You have no evidence either way. I mean, I don't know everything about all of the BC lore, but you don't have to. You get Gladiator, you just have to be one of the best 2v2 teams. So you have to know how to work with your teammate and beat the other teams. Well, this is exciting. Bunch of illusions and stuff. These don't really hit for much damage. It's just confusing. You find which one it is. I think you can do this. Oh yeah. The one with the dots is probably it. Thinking with our head here. Thanks, Warlock. Those are really nice. Parry is a really good mitigation stat. 
The armor on these are pretty high. There's no strength or anything, so they're not threat pants, but they're really good mitigation pants. If you're a fresh 60 or close to 60, that would be a rather nice item. As it stands, I have the legs of might, so I don't need those. Okay, so Blood of the Innocents was picked up from this boss. So we can do the balcony bat boss, the gargoyle guy. <coughs> oh man. Do you ever sneeze and then accidentally auto run into a bad situation? It's happened to me. Do you ever sneeze off the bridge in Black Rock Depths into the lava and die? It's happened to me. Gotta micro your sneezes and time them correctly. You mainly stream StarCraft, you've really gotta practice your sneeze timing. So you apply the Blood of the Innocents there, you just right click this cauldron if you have it. The rogue got it from that last boss, it also drops from the Succubus boss in the first library room. So we're going to take out this boss, and then there's another stairwell down where we're going to do the final set of bosses. There are six rooms, three upstairs, three downstairs. You have to clear out all the bosses in all those rooms, and then the final boss shows up when you fight the final boss. My sharpening stuff is running out right as we get to the boss fight. If you do have some threat problems, it doesn't hurt to ask people to wait for a couple sunders. I did start this fight in battle stance, which was a mistake. Oh, this boss has a disarm. Okay. So if you have death grips, you should equip those before the fight. I do have that item. I forgot he does this, but now you know. Death Grips drop in Stratholm off of the Mayor boss. One of the effects is it makes you immune to disarm. Put my shield on shield block. Priest is out of mana, as we can see. Well, we're good. Those are actually quite good as well. Hit rating Agi Boots, male. I might even take those for a DPS set, because my boots have no attack stats on them at all. And we have no one else in the party who can use mail. So let's take those for DPS. And we rolled a big one. We're playing on the white main server. You can use the creation command here. This has a guild manifesto, basically what we're about. We have a bunch of solid, respectful players. Some people are veterans of WoW. They played for a long time. They know this game inside and out. Some of them have done some high level rating. Other people are brand new to the game. Do we have a key? Key. And not, don't run away from the tank, run toward the tank if you're having problems. We got lots of guys here. So I'll do a war stomp, try to stay out of the Icky stuff, if possible. Blood rage, bloodthirst, tab sunder. Tab sunder is your dungeon tanking bread and butter. If you're unsure of what to do in a chaotic situation, 
Or if you know it exactly what you're doing, the answer is probably tab sunder or revenge. If you're in deep prot, you oftentimes have improved sunder armor, which makes it even better. I do not, so that makes revenge a little bit better by comparison. The set bonus on might for having all pieces is 15% on sunder armor, which would be nice, but usually by the time you have eight pieces of might, you're gonna have two pieces of wrath, home of wrath, and then the legs of wrath drop off of Ragnaros. The helm drops off of Onyxia. Waiting on the healer mana. These pulls are relatively rough. There is one here too. And we got him. Blood Rage. Battle Shout to get some initial threat. Sunder for the diseased ghoul. And the other guys walk really slow. So pulling them back is nice because you're not receiving very much damage while you're taking out this first ghoul. I'll focus on the reanimated. Huge Bloodthirst crit. Bloodthirst is an interesting ability because it's based on attack power, not weapon damage. No, no, Marlac. You're standing in the green stuff. You can't stand in the green stuff. You'll die and turn into an angel. He's back. He just bounce back from it. It wasn't even a mistake, he was probably just testing the soul stone to make sure it works. Wink. Never happened. <laughs> it's gonna be an XD for me. Okay. There's a lever you can flip to open this, I think. Remember where it is. Maybe it's in here. Viewing room. For all these guys, there's a quest to weaken all of them so you can kill them. You can plow your way through, but those are really difficult pulls. So we're going to go down this way and fight a Lich boss. Spooky, ominous doors. Any issues with unintended double-clicking? Sometimes that's the thing that just happens when your mouse is kind of wearing out. I have not had problems with a Logitech mouse with that, but that happened with my Razer mice. Make sure everyone's here. I do have a backup mouse in my other room in case something goes awry. I have had that problem. It makes StarCraft 2 basically unplayable. This game you could probably play, but it wouldn't be as fun. Sometimes if you have a mouse problem and you contact the maker, they'll just ship you a new one because their reputation matters a little bit and oftentimes one mouse worth of cost is not worth their reputation going sour. So I think I actually did have one Logitech mouse that messed up and then I contacted them and they sent another one. And I didn't even try to like be like, I'm a streamer, you should give me stuff. No, it's just like, yo, this mouse broke. Is this a normal thing? And they were like, no problem. I'll send you another one. It's pretty legit. So good luck with that. This is a cool instance too. You've got elves. I guess these are high elves or are they blood elves? What is the lore answer here? Do we have any lore masters here? Welcome to the laboratory. The 
the lever is in that stupid room you killed not too long ago. Do you mean the one with all the diseased ghouls and reanimated corpses? The crypt. With the illusion lady. That's good to know. Shadow Bolt Volley. But the rogues can kick. Warriors can pummel or shield bash. Now we've got this bad boy. Everybody's basically full mana. We can just go. I've got my battle shout. Can sunder it up. Rage potions are really nice. Probably wouldn't recommend using them in dungeons just because it ends up being pretty expensive and the pulls aren't really that hard. This guy highlights how having your back against the wall is a good tanking practice in general. So he does cast fear on people. Fortunately, we have two undead and a warrior who can use death wish. Recklessness also allows you to be fear immune and I'm a popsicle. This is dispellable by priests. Or you can just enjoy being a popsicle. Ooh, frost chest. We have no frost people here. Shadow resistance boots. Part of me wants to roll on those for shadow res set, but I don't even know what you would need a shadow res set for. We won the boots anyway. That's a sign. There's going to be some Shadow Res boss, and they're going to be like, man, Brunt, we really need Shadow Resistance set for you. And I'll be like, you know what? I've got the boots. Okay, this is the final area. And by final, I mean we have to clear six rooms and another boss. Why did you drop off? I think it was an accident. This is the slow, splody zombie room. Finally, we get to use Piercing Howl. Piercing Howl causes all enemy... Enemies near the warrior to be dazed, reducing movement speed by 50%. So what we can do is the warlock can use Reign of Fire. And I can just Piercing Howl and kite them. So let's pull quite a few for fun. For fun. Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Those rogues are gonna just explode. It's gonna be pretty funny. Just need to make sure the priest doesn't die. The warlock is out of mana, which is a bit troublesome, but he can life tap. Back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up. The rogues are just watching this. Isn't magic amazing? It is, though. It's very amazing. This is a fun pull right here. <laughs> For your own runs, I probably wouldn't recommend this. Probably. If you want to, you can. Is it necessary? No. Is it responsible? No. Is it entertaining and exciting? Yes. This. Can shoot it with my bow. Shoot it with your gun. That's a reanimated one. Nice job. Nice job. Why did the rogue release? You don't need to release. We got a res. 
O ye of little faith. Where did he die? He's right here. When did he release? And the rogue here lies dead on the floor. Weapon and bow in hand. He tried his best, but the zombies exploded. And with that, took his life. But there was a priest. The Grunt Marlac. Recently level 60 priest. With a resurrection spell, brought Senior Sergeant Pestilence back to life. He's feeling refreshed, intrigued at the overall experience of being dead again, but then alive once more. Dodgeball is a funny movie. I agree. Throw a demoralizing shout. Just get some auto attacks on these. Piercing howl. War stop. A torn war. Wonder exactly how much damage it is when they blow up. Kind of curious. Let's see. Kill this one while they hit me. 675? It's nothing. How much HP does Brunt have? 5.7k? The Ford buff. Fantastic. Okay. Room. One of six boss fight. This is the law keeper. Waiting on the priest manor, and then we'll go. Priest manor at 65% battle stance. Charge. Gonna overpower. Try to burn my mana. Or not mana rage. And then we'll go defensive stance. Deep Prot has no tactical mastery, so you want to try to spend your rage before you switch stances. It's pretty amazing the difference in threat output between battle stance and defensive stance, especially if you have all your points in defiance. If you read the tooltip of defiance, here, increases the threat generated by your attacks by 15% while in defensive stance. While in defensive stance, defensive stance already is 110% of your usual threat. So it's even on top of that. Pretty nice. What is up, Thorn? Do we like the Skyrim music for this? It's pretty fun. Don't stand in the gross stuff. Oh no, Marlak, he's died. He stood in the gross stuff. And then for a few moments as a powerful spirit healer 
casting spells. He fell into the stairs. His naughty bits exposed beneath the robe. The team looked away out of shame. <laughs> May you rest in peace for these moments while your spirit slowly returns to your body. Should we pull these? Is he pulling it? I can tell he wants to. We'll get one. We can do it one ghoul at a time. There's three. Stunlock. War stomp. Bam. This is physical damage taken, increased stamina, chance to spread wandering plague on hit. Hell yeah! Thank you for the support. Get some scourge stones. The school has really high dodge, apparently. <coughs> Excuse me. Summon? You bet. Warlock is a very convenient class. Lots of utility. Maybe not the most impressive on the damage meters, but is that the most important thing? Yes. <laughs> it kind of depends. What's your goal? What gets you going in this game? Like some dips? Some DPS meters, that's your jam? Eh, probably not Warlock till phase five. I think AQ40 has a bunch of Warlock gear to make him really shine. Team here, let's go. Let's get that battle shot up. Nope, come back here, buddy. Back here. Well, did he get the summon? Yeah, he did. Oh boy. This guy hits quite hard. Ooh, those are good too. Nine strength, nine agi, one hit. Versus what were those other boots that I got? Twenty agi. That's a crap ton of agi. Agree these. Shout out to anyone in the YouTube comments who says, "Yo, you just rolled greed on bis for DPS." This is the main tank of the guild, I don't really change specs. I'm pretty much always tanking. There are a few rare scenarios where... Say on Onyxia, during phase 3, an off tank gets threat before me, and then I'll DPS for it. But in the vast majority of cases, I'm not DPSing, and in those rare cases, combat is usually already initiated, so I don't really have the option to gear swap. That's my excuse for greeting on Biss right there. It is Biss, though. Dreamer, it's actually Biss. Actually, just unfollowed and unsubscribed. I can't watch you do this. <laughs> this little railing is kind of silly. You would think that as a Tauren, you could shoot over it, but... Looks like these guys have a bone shield kind of thing for some of it. 
the adepts are just the standard casters frost bolts shadow bolts stuff like that maybe a cultist turn into a shade would you join a cult no i wouldn't join a cult but what if that cult allowed you to turn into a dark shade instead of dying no oh, sure i'll join a cult what if the cult had the best espresso machine in all the land? Oh, hell yeah. I'll join that cult. Wait, is it free? Yes, it's included. And in what? Uh-oh. Those shade things are physical immune, so... Yeah. Gotta wait for the warlock to kill it, but he's out of mana. The struggles. You can't jump over this. No, you can. Do the run and jump. That's only a two pull. Amazing line of sight play here. Huge Torrent hiding behind a tomb, just acting natural. I'm invisible. There's a tree branch in Black Fathom Deeps that we were just laughing about. You can hide behind a single slim tree branch and it counts as line of sight, even if you're a huge Torrent and it's only covering 4% of your body. I think this may be the easiest boss. She casts some holy and shadow stuff. There's a slow ability. What does this do? Attack speed, movement speed. Cast a corruption dot, which can be kicked. Flash heal. Shadowcraft Bracers. The set bonuses are pretty funny. 200 armor. Is this a PvP item? Okay, upstairs is clear. Now we're going downstairs. Make sure everyone's present. And accounted for. I see Rogue. Priest Warlock, we're good. Two senders on this guy. These are attacking pretty wildly. Wait for a second, the priest is at zero mana. Ah yes, the joys of just hitting level 60. Well, good morning. The bow that I have is from DM East. It has hit rating on it. I'm pretty sure whether you're Fury or Prot, or Fury Prot, or Arms, or a rogue. Hit rating is the way to go. Your range side of slot. Whenever you get into the raids, like Molten Core, a lot of stuff, even the trash, is level 61 to 63. Which means you're going to miss a bunch, you're going to have dodge parry blocks happen, you're going to get a bunch of glancing blows. It means less rage generation, less DPS. If you have tactical mastery, doing a charge thunderclap demo shout defensive stance opener is pretty good. With fury prot, it seemed pretty crap. 
just because you dump all your rage whenever you swap. And if you're spending your high threat abilities, when you're in battle stance, you're not really getting full value for the rage because you're missing out on defiance. Caster pants, scourge stone. This boss hits heckin' hard. So do these skeletons. We do have a priest who could shackle. Undead tend to be fear immune most of the time, so you probably can't intimidate and shout. If I had to take a wild guess. If I didn't have to take a wild guess, I would still probably think you can't fear these. It was a 295 bow skill. Always kind of satisfying when you get a really big bow crit to start off a pull. If I have all my raid buffs and stuff, sometimes I'll get a 220 or so crit with the bow. Like a boss. Shackle Undead. One of those spells you don't really get to use very often. But when you use it, it can be amazing. Is he gonna pull with it? Let's see. I don't know if he understood what I meant. Maybe quickly paging through the spell book. He got it. He got it. Oh no. The rogue's blade flurry broke it. How exciting. I've got shield ball up. Absorbing lots of damage. I don't know if I can disarm. Let's see. Let's make sure we got threat on these guys. Last stand. More HP. Priest is very low. Can we survive? Rogue is doing his best. Priest just soul stoned. Pulling out all the stops here. Boss is getting low. Got the dodge. Block, dip, dive, dodge. We're using all five Ds of dodgeball right now. Go in the fight. Good hustle. Maybe the hardest boss fight in the instance by just how much melee damage you take. The room with the skeletons, I guess the construct looking ones, those hit pretty hard. I think this one hits the hardest. Mr. Alexei Barov. Ouch. Just getting a res up. No wipes so far, we've had some deaths. Trollomance has a few tricks. Good night, Erosif. Final room. Reese is still in the other room. You can see on the mini map they're heading over.
Battle Shout stays up. Risen Bone Warders. Oh my goodness. Maybe. Do they have casted abilities? No, they just run up to you. Guess you don't have to line aside pull these. Lady Elusia Barrel, her ghostly form. Go for the skin on the ground if you wanted. What is that? Skin on the ground. Eh? I believe that Rogue, sorry, uh, Undead can use Will of the Forsaken to break from that. And I think Priest can dispel it. Did our brother Rogue kill the Rogue? <laughs> it's brutal. What skin is this? I don't even know what he's talking about. What are you talking about, dude? Oh, Skin of Shadow. Oh. 31. Is it going to be enough? 52. I roll so far. Okay, there's the boss. No, 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 no! Can we get a res up? Can we get a res on this poor rogue? This poor man who's dead on the stairs. We had blade flurry. <laughs> Brutal. We'll try another res. Is he moving? What is happening? He's moving. That's a very technical problem we're having right now. We are experiencing some difficulties with your resurrection spell. Didn't get it. Hello? Yes, this is resurrection. Yes, we're trying to bring you back to life here. Yes. Yeah, sorry, you got mind controlled and the other rogue had blade three up and he just straight up killed you. Boom. Fully healed. And we are in last boss territory now. Oh my god, is he wearing a Santa hat for the holiday event? He is! Who knew that this was a thing? I didn't know. Did you know? He's wearing a green Santa hat. Incredible. Oh, the priest is running out. <laughs> Establishing dominance in the situation. Wait, should a healer be doing that? Doesn't matter. I've been turned into a skeleton. Let's get that battle shot. Bam. So this boss throws someone into a room. Unless our DPS is just that high, but he doesn't. Usually, he throws a person into the room and then closes the door. Green winter hat. Robe of the void pattern. Classes warlock. Nice. Okay. Well, that's basically it. 